bitter days for the rangers our way of life is in danger the rumors are flying up north they're arising walking in the winter wasteland Patriarch, that's what they call him. He's got a job we've been involved in. In exchange for our needs, we will accomplish the deed. Walking in the winter wasteland, the road up ahead is full of danger. But death is our choice if we back down. So we'll strike up a deal with the stranger And in days we will be Colorado bound The range away is marked by bravery Ending murder, theft and slavery Gotta keep it alive in hopes that people will thrive Walking in a winter wasteland The bitter cold, it is a cruel friend The winter groans at the world's end our mission is clear, yes the rangers are here Walking in a winter wasteland The road up ahead is full of danger But death is our choice if we pay down So we'll strike up a deal with the stranger And in days we will be Colorado bound going on everybody hope you're all enjoying your holiday season this year i know i am just taking a little bit of time off work spending some time with the family it's been a good time and doing some gaming too and dude it's cold outside it's dark i feel like it's time to head back into the wasteland wasteland 3 is such a good game i played through it a couple times both times with uh, custom rangers this will be my first time with a pre-made duo and we're going with the tech heads chris and chris Okay, I um, wrote a little backstory for each of these characters. I know, it's yeah, I'm a nerd. I'm just going to face it. It's totally fine. I embrace that. Um, but um, yeah, I did. I wrote, I wrote a little RP script for these guys. The game talks about how it describes them as being a couple, like they're in love. Um, I didn't really go that route. I went a different route. So if you'll bear with me for a couple minutes, I, I wrote a... A little story for each of these guys. Let's just start it with uh, Chris Lawson, 17-year-old mechanical mastermind and son to the late Kathy Lawson, the former head of research at the Ag Center. The scientists and farmers who ran the place were devoted to optimizing crop cultivation and animal husbandry in an effort to keep the people of Arizona fed. Chris was born and raised at the center, surrounded by cutting-edge innovative methods and technology. The young phenom, fascinated by the wide array of machinery that defined the complex, spent most of his waking hours pulling apart scrap materials and mechanisms, studying the inner workings and doing his best to, quote, get things working. To then 11-year-old Chris, that simply meant creating any sort of explosion. If he were to get a discarded monitor to self-destruct by way of intense fireball, then that was time well spent. Kathy approved of Chris's tinkering. After all, she was the one funding his projects, purchasing the scrap from her own place of business. She was hoping for a return on investment, and she got it when Chris completed a fully mechanized 
an automated feeding system for the livestock. On his 12th birthday, however, it so happened that Betsy the cow's head was blown clean off. The second her tongue touched the grain feeder, Chris claimed sabotage. I guess we'll never know for sure. Regardless, Kathy eased up and allowed Chris to adopt one of the stray kittens roaming the outskirts of the farm. May teach him to respect life a bit more, she said. Well, as soon as he put a name to that kitty, Chris made a vow that he would never kill another soul again, animal or otherwise. He still didn't admit responsibility for Betsy's demise, but he sure did spend a lot more time with those cows, making sure they had the most comfortable lives possible. And young Tabby Tom, he didn't mind one bit. Strategically placing himself next to the large feed piles, he had all the mice he could handle. Chris Thorne, 26-year-old energy enthusiast and younger sister to Rose, formerly a prominent member of Kathy's team at the Ag Center. During the center's heyday, Chris's brilliant mind was always overshadowed by that of Rose's. Significantly older and wiser in the world, Rose always seemed to coddle and shelter her baby sister, reverting back to their days in Darwin, where she had been thrust into the role of mother to Chris, raising her from infancy. She would always be a child in Rose's eyes. Despite Kathy's persistent suggestions that Chris's mind be put to use within R&D at the center, Rose would have none of it. The last time she worked with one of her sisters, things hadn't gone so well. So Chris found other outlets for her genius. She took up jewelry making with absolutely zero precious metals. She used insects, the most available resource on the farm. And seeing as how many of her pieces required the use of entire colonies of pests, the farmers saw it as a win for them. One method she devised that was a favorite of many was showcased in what she called her cryo line. She was able to freeze the insects from the inside by inserting an element that she created using the heart of a rat in a frozen Charleston chew bar. She claims it's the 110-year-old bar that did the trick. I must say, her 1,500-fly chess piece was quite dazzling. It's the chew that makes it pop, she would always say. Then 21 years old, Chris was more than ready to make groundbreaking contributions to the Ag Center. But she was never given the chance. She was continually passed off as a fun artist. But there was one who was always amazed by what she could pull off, the Lawson boy. The weird and wacky inventions concocted by Thorne never failed to win the interest of the curious boy, and the two had developed a sibling-like relationship over the years. Their minds, not occupied with the minutia of running the farm, were free to wander and experiment and investigate. This freedom had produced the two greatest minds the Ag Center had, yet no one knew it. Then disaster struck. The farm was overcome and laid waste by a biomutation within the water system later discovered to be an intentional act of murder. No one survived the outbreak, and the genetically mutated plants and insects consumed the Ag Center from within. Thorne, Lawson, and Tabby Tom were fortunate that day. The three of them were on the very outskirts of the farm that morning, gathering potato bugs for a new project. Tom hadn't had breakfast, and when he spotted a nice plump mouse streaking out of a small hay bale, he was off. Tom chased the mouse south. Since he had done this before, Chris wasn't concerned, but the hours passed and Tom was nowhere in sight. Lawson began wandering south, and Thorne joined him for safety purposes. The wasteland's no place to journey alone. Four hours later, they found Tom at a small oasis not far from the farm. It was clear he had consumed the mouse, only to throw it up. Yet he still had a somewhat satisfied look on his face. Come on, Tom, old rascal. The trio arrived back at Ag Center as the sun was setting. But the mutated plants had already taken hold, and utter chaos was ensuing. Thorne knew right away what sort of science could cause such a catastrophe, and she knew their only option was to escape while it was still possible. Lawson tore at the vegetation, still believing he could get to his mother. You don't understand, Chris! There was a serious and solemnity in Thorne's eyes that the boy had never seen before. This is more powerful than any of us. Thus... Their lives at the Ag Center were over. They returned to the oasis where Tom's breakfast was still lying, now covered in flies. They improvised and used their brains to survive. A week later, Ranger Citadel up north exploded, and the two felt as though the end had finally come. Several weeks after that, with the pair of farm kids on the brink of starvation, 
the elements pressing in to kill them. They were come upon by a small band of wastelanders. Their rugged features were masked, silhouetted against the Arizona sun. Thorn was able to scratch out three words. Who are you? And when she heard the reply, she was washed over by the sweetest relief that she had ever felt in her whole life. We're the Desert Rangers. And that's how this duo became part of the Ranger squad. The rest was history. Well, actually, we're about to make history with the Wasteland 3 playthrough with this, this duo. Chris and Chris, Lawson and Thorn. Dude, I'm excited about it. As you can tell, <laughs> completely nerded out with it. I, li I like this kind of thing, though, making stories like this. So, um, it'd be fun if you guys could join me on it. And it's just a really fun game. I'm excited to see how it goes. I'm excited to see what we can do with it. And uh, we'll see you for episode one. Will? Really?